look inside. When I read Cervantes, his hero, Don Quixote, seemed to me a great saint and martyr who had left amidst jeering and laughter to discover beyond our humble everyday life the essence which hides behind appearances. What essence? I did not know at the time. I learned later. There is only one essence, always the same. As yet, man has found no other means to elevate himself, none but the subduing of matter and the submission of the individual to an end which transcends the individual, even if that is an illusion. When the heart believes and loves, there is no illusion. There is only courage, trust, and fruitful action. When I look back, I realize that what motivated me as a young person was a combination of fiction, imagination, and idealism. Look up. A pastiche of made-up stories, listen, characters, ideas, values. And yet, it worked. These imaginary worlds fulfilled their function. They acted as cultural fuel that carried me through. Philosopher Alain de Botton wrote that the art we love is frequently something we're drawn to because it compensates us for what we lack. It counterbalances us. When we're moved by a work of art, it may be because it contains concentrated doses of qualities we need more of in our lives. The art a country or a person calls beautiful gives you vital clues as to what's missing in them. It's in the power of art to help us be more rounded, more balanced, and more sane. As we grow up, we tend to demystify things, people, narratives, ideals, ideas. All this imagined stuff looms increasingly futile, distant, less important, less serious, 
We value pragmatism, as we should. But pragmatism doesn't necessarily push you to work day and night on your project. Obsession. It doesn't necessarily motivate you to sacrifice the instant for the future. Obsession. It is your imagination, your faith in things not seen. Obsession. It gets you through. Let go. We tend to mock people who are passionate and diligent and driven and optimistic. I can't do it. People who are absorbed into their work. Geeks. Nerds. I won't make it. A whiff of arrogance and self-importance. I'm alone. But I would take driven and self-important over apathetic and careless any day of the week. Listen. Listen. Creating anything of consequence and meaning requires diligence. It requires pushing yourself to your intellectual limits, questioning boundaries, stretching the imagination, interrogating arguments, struggle, questioning assumptions, seeking proof, even when proof cannot be obtained, love. Maturity isn't about killing the imagination. Maturity is about liberating and taming it at the same time. Even when deep down, you know that the whole game is futile. Especially then, failure. Whatever gives you strength, whatever helps you get through the day, whatever takes you one step forward is important. However superficial it may seem, I will make it. We need ideals. We need beauty and hope. We need art and myth and storytelling, even when everything seems lost. Especially then, we need a vision. Together, alone. Everybody has the capacity of vision. If we haven't lost the gift of listening, of keeping the hidden corridors of our heart and mind open, of opening our eyes wide, then we get a perception of beauty, of truth, of the moral good. It is that inner voice that tells us unmistakably what is good, what is beautiful, what is right, what actually matters. In every decision we make, in every creative act, that voice tells us if the right note has been struck. If it has, and that happens only too rarely, then truth has been fulfilled. And with it, goodness, harmony, beauty. This is who I am. The vision, however, is rarely clear. Most of the time, we see only through a mist. The goal is hardly recognizable, and this is often through our own fault. The corridors leading inward are filled with every day's litter, noise, distractions, unimportant things, laziness, anger, insecurity, fear. I'm not good enough. Above all else, fear. Not good enough. The corridors of our soul eventually become impenetrable. We question our passions, our motivation, our drive. We forget what we are about. We get lost. It's over. If my mind could gain a firm footing, I would not make essays. I would make decisions but it is always an apprenticeship and on trial. Let go. Listen. The greatest battles in life are the ones we fight with our own self. Every day is a struggle. Rejection, failure, loss, making sense of it, making peace with it, learning from it. That's the single most important step to happiness. After all, genuine strength 
is nothing but exercised, metamorphosed weakness. I will make it. And then, suddenly, a bright moment, we can see the final vision in great clarity, as in a flash of light. At that point, everything falls into place without difficulty. We see the ideal now, we can almost touch it, and we set out with hammer and nails to work our way through. But the sheer amount of work blurs the original vision. Creating anything worthwhile requires painstaking hard work, physically and mentally draining, repeating tiny, mundane tasks over and over and over again. Obsession. Patience. Again. Persistence. Again. Over and over and over. Again. Focus, focus, focus. Again and over. Again. We work and work and more than once the original vision is all but gone. We may well forget what the meaning of all this is. Gone. That's because we forget to look up from time to time. Look up. When you lose your way, look up to the guiding stars. And then, look deep inside. Inside us, there are the dark powers of the Earth. The instincts with all their conflicting directions and ambitions. A chaos of emotions, often undetermined. Even an urge for destruction. It is the triumph of human nature to be able, at least sometimes, to turn this chaos into harmony. To create harmony of this very chaotic material of our souls. This is the essence of the creative process. To create order and meaning, a truly divine act. It is the spirit that should govern matter. Harmony is always endangered by chaos, and focus is threatened by distractions. This is our human condition we wouldn't feel the greatness of harmony if it were not constantly in danger of being overrun, of being destroyed. It is a similar thing with true freedom, so fragile, always endangered by tyranny and anarchy. Freedom can exist only together with discipline and self-discipline. We must recognize the neighbor's right to the same amount of freedom we wish to enjoy ourselves. Harmony is balance. Harmony is measure. Metron Ariston. Creating anything in art or in life poses the same challenge. On the one side there is passion, the great emotion, the urge to express something, everything. On the other side, there is the vessel in which all this has to flow, the shape of a work, form, style, integrity. How do you prevent conflicting ideas from damaging or destroying each other? How do you make them meet? How do you submit everything to a higher purpose? How do you make sense of it all? How do you put it in order? The aim is liberty, not anarchy. Our perception of harmony may never be alike. Each of us is a solar system in their own right, with planets and moons. Each human being is unique, but we all obey the same cosmic law, harmony. When we break that law, the result is chaos. Together, alone, it is a triumph of humanity that, in a modest way, we can all create harmony. That we can all work towards elevating ourselves and our species. So much beauty. Thousands of years of progress, of civilization, of thought. We have inherited a treasure entrusted to us by previous generations human knowledge. 
millennia of experience, trial and error, pain and suffering, failure, success and redemption, violence and reconciliation, destruction and creation, all turned into words, characters, shapes and figures, musical notes, images, artifacts, equations, observations, diaries, narratives, interviews, theories and experiments, studies, discoveries and inventions, systems and networks, cures, laws, norms, universal human rights. We have a responsibility to protect and nurture this vast body of knowledge and safeguard the foundations upon which it was built. Logic, reason, freedom of thought, freedom of speech, dialogue, empathy, experience, expertise, scholarship, science. We are all unreliable narrators and unreliable observers, but facts matter. Truth exists. Truth is real, and it is all around us. Everything that is around us, everything that makes up our society, buildings and roads, schools and hospitals, libraries and museums, city halls and parliaments, laws and institutions, benefits and entitlements, opportunities and comforts, hierarchies and structures, rituals and habits, ways of doing things, ways of seeing things, even our dreams and aspirations, daily life, it's all been created by people before us, for us, for us. It's all a massive theater stage, a spectacle, a show in which we have a part to play. We didn't ask to be in it, but we are in it all the same. And the show must go on. And it is now our turn to become citizens, to assume responsibility, individual and collective responsibility for this universe, to make meaning of all this, to find our role, to listen, and in the process, to find our true self, to create harmony over chaos. This is who I am. value as creators, as human beings, is decided not by what we have, not by whatever knowledge we possess, but by what we are. Think about the people you most admire and respect, the people that inspire you, your teacher, your mentor, your friend, your grandmother, your hero. It is not their possessions or their social status or their qualifications that give them value. It is not their material properties that matter the most. It is their human properties, their essence, essence, their way of filtering experience into wisdom, their very being, which acts as a sponge. They absorb the pain and provide comfort. They see solutions where others see problems. They insist and persist. They treat adversity with dignity and patience. They overcome grief to remember, to celebrate and to be grateful. They understand and guide. They empathize and encourage. They smile. They listen, listen, hope, listen, 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 hope, listen. love, faith, love, listen. If we want to become like our heroes, if we want to reach out, the real material we have to shape is our own self. To look inwards, reflect, observe, 
try to get better. No one owes us their attention, their care. That we have to fight for and earn every day. The moment you find your voice, the moment you have true power, is when someone is listening to you. Not pretending to be listening, actually listening, giving you the space together to exist alone, expressing genuine curiosity about your thoughts and feelings. It is at that point that we experience true communion. We finally open up, expose our vulnerability, our weakness, our humanity, and we start to look around. And we realize, I am not alone. alone. Virginia Woolf wrote, As we face each other in omnibuses and underground railways, we are looking into the mirror. That accounts for the vagueness, the gleam of glassiness in our eyes. I look at all these people around me, strangers in the metro, going to work, going home, looking down, looking tired, looking lost, avoiding each other's gaze, sharing a space, every face a thousand stories, and for one long, precious moment, I feel this pure, unconditional, overwhelming love for each and every one of them, for each and every one of us. Be generous. Listen to the stories of others. Listen carefully. And you'll find that they are really your stories. You have the power to give others the space to exist. And you can then exist through others. Creativity, art, communication, influence, progress. These are moral questions. Morality is not about being perfect or faultless or always doing what you're told to do. Morality is about accepting your share of responsibility, doing your bit, watching out for each other, managing to love this imperfect human nature, these poor little creatures in a corner of the universe, waking up day after day, making an effort, so much beauty, our essence. We are the evidence of things not seen. Our words and actions affect others. We have the power to hurt and to heal, to destroy and to create. We make a choice. We can be role models too. And when we're gone, gone, Others will look up to us, because it will be our turn to act as their guiding stars. Let go.